So this phagocytosis is without damage to the tissue, it is part of clean up. So remember phagocytosis can do two type, the macrophages can do two type of phagocytosis then. Phagocytosis which is part of defense, when that would happen there would be chemical substances sprinkled on the tissue to kill any bacteria, viruses, fungi and dead tissue and the tumor cells and those things. This is active defense. But when the clean up is happening, then macrophages are also responsible for the clean up. And how do they do that? They are picking up these things, neutrophils, other debris, but in that case they do not regurgitate, they do not throw out chemical substances which would cause further tissue damage. Otherwise think about it, inflammation would never stop. Every time macrophage would pick up debris of one thing, it would throw more chemical substances which would create more debris. Would inflammation ever stop? No. So macrophages are smart. They know that if I am engaged through CD31 and I am going to phagocytose a neutrophil, now I am not going to throw any chemical mediators in the tissue. Okay. So that is about the um, CD31 which is very important. Continuing, um, what we would talk about is the half life of the neutrophil. So, neutrophil normally stay one to six hours in the circulation. Neutrophils normally stay about one to six hours in the circulation then they would jump into the tissue. So from the circulation, from the blood vessel, they will jump out into the tissue. Why would they jump out in the tissue? Well, there is no infection. Normally they go out to fight infections in the tissue. No, there are pathogens attacking us all the time. I am talking to you right now and you are listening to me right now, hopefully you are listening to me. Um, Pathogens are attacking my body, pathogens are attacking your body at this time. You are sitting, you are all healthy, you are happy, but fight is happening, right now it is happening. And how do we know that it is happening? Unfortunately, the folks who have the misfortune of having a problem with the neutrophil, they develop infections very, very commonly and their survival really becomes difficult. They live in the similar environment as we do, right? So that simply proves that there is continuous infection and fight with the pathogens uh, throughout our time, healthy, happy time, and neutrophils are doing their function. So one to six hours, they stay in the blood, then they jump out and they go in the tissue. In the tissue, they can live up to two days, and then they are eaten up. We just talked about this, that how would they be cleared out? They would die. How would they die? They will become agile, or sorry, they would become senile, old. They do not really just die and say, okay, I am dead. They become senile and the macrophage comes and detects the senile neutrophil. We talked about it CD31 and then it would phagocytose that neutrophil. So up to two days in the tissue, one to six hours in the uh, blood. Of course, this can change in active infections. By active infection, I mean infections which are more than normal. In that case, the life of the neutrophil is going to become shortened. Why? Because it is now actively fighting with the bacteria. So it would kill some bacteria, phagocytose, phagos, macrophage would kill this thing, then some bacteria would kill the neutrophil as well. So there is an active fight which is happening and then the life of neutrophil can, can be reduced. Another thing in the terms of fight is the pus. So I hope you know, um, so I would very quickly say this, body's defenses can be separated, innate defense can be separated into two uh, types, pyogenic defense and granulomatous defense. Pyogenic or pus producing, pyo, pyogenic or pus producing defense and granulomatous Mattis or granuloma producing, granuloma producing defense. 
what that means is pyogenic or pus producing defense is the defense in which there is pus produced and pus is dead neutrophils, live neutrophils, tissue debris, it does not have 3 s in it, it has 2 s, tissue debris, other dead or live cell, other cells, some macrophages of course, they were always there. So, but the primary thing is these. So, pus is white because it is it has neutrophils. Pus is green. So, the green pus also is because of neutrophils. So, when somebody has phlegm, you receive a patient who is coughing and throwing phlegm and having what we say is productive cough. That green color is also because of the neutrophils. We will talk about it that the primary granule of the neutrophil have myeloperoxidase in them. The myeloperoxidase look green, that is an enzyme, we will talk about it today in this lecture. They look green in color, that is why the pus looks green or the phlegm looks green. These myeloperoxidase due to this thing are also called verdoperoxidase, why the, the word V E R D E that also means green, right. Remember viridian pathogens, green pathogens. So, pus is really neutrophils which are dead or alive which are actively battling and the broken up, I did not say here tissue debris, other cells, macrophages. Most important thing um, dead or active pathogen, that is why this all is happening. So, the broken up bacteria and broken up viruses and those kind of things, that is also uh, part of the pus. All right, so uh, now that I have throw this down here, I will put this back, these things, okay. So, uh, let us continue and we would talk about the function of the neutrophil. Okay. So, very, very important thing, how does a neutrophil reach the site of problem, the pathogen, pathogen or infection and how does it take care of the infection. So, that, that is our part of this lecture now. So, let us uh, start discussing that. So, here, here is our story. Keep an eye on the bone marrow house, keep an eye that here we have the endothelium and these are the endothelial cells. Remember these were the sad cells which think we do not talk about them too much. So, we, uh, we are going to talk about them and then here is the tissue, correct. So, in this tissue we have gotten a pathogen, a silly pathogen has appeared here. Right, so he is having fun, jumping around, having fun. So now please remember, there, there is going to be a cross now between the immunology and the inflammation pathology, because these are at the end of the day similar. Say the inflammation is helping us in defense. So remember, inflammation has two uh, phases. So we have inflammation phase where we are actually defending the body and then we have a repair phase, right. So, we are talking about this part where inflammatory process is going to help us defend, but our discussion is mostly involving how the neutrophil is active in that. So, I am not teaching inflammation at this time, I am trying to figure out with you how the neutrophil would participate in the defense mechanism. So, going back to this, we have a little pathogen who has appeared here, it could be a bacteria, it could be a gram negative bacteria, in that case it has a lipopolysaccharide, right, remember LPS, gram negative bacteria, they have lipopolysaccharides in them, then it could be a gram positive bacteria, in which case it does not have a lipopolysaccharide on it, 